flows. Tantra, the transcendence. In the process of transformation, first we have to work on the egocentric identities, nafs, and all that relates to it. This forms the part of sex and all that relates to it. Sufi says, first we have to work on all that relates to nafs, egocentric identities, conditionings, etc. and then work on the higher levels. Only then transcendence is possible. When I say that Tantra is neither moral nor immoral, I mean Tantra is basically a science. It looks at you, at what you are. It means that Tantra is not trying to transform you, but it actually does transform you through reality. The difference between magic and science is the same as between morality and Tantra. Magic also tries to transform things, but only through words, without knowing the reality. The magician can say that now the rain will stop. He cannot really stop the rain or he can say that rain will come, but he cannot start the rain. He can just go on using the words. Tantra is science. Science says first know what the reality is, what man is, and do not create values and also do not create ideals right now. First know what it is. Do not think of the ought. Instead think of what is. And once the is is known, then you can change it. Then you have the secret. For example, Tantra says, do not try to go against sex. Because if you go against sex and try to create a state of celibacy, purity, it is impossible. It is just magical. Without knowing what sex energy is, without knowing of what sex is constituted of, without going deep into the reality of it, the secret of it, you can create an ideal of celibacy. Then what will you do? You will simply suppress. And a man who is suppressing sex is more sexual than a person who is indulging in it. Because through indulgence, the energy is released through suppression. It is there moving in your system continuously in every part of your being. A person who suppresses sex starts seeing sex everywhere. Everything becomes sexual. Not that everything is really sexual, but now he projects. Now he projects his own hidden energies and this is now projected everywhere. Everywhere he will look. Everywhere he will look and he will see nothing else but sex. And because he is condemning himself, he will start condemning everyone. You cannot find a moralist who is not violently condemning. He is condemning everyone and everything. To him, everyone is wrong. 
then he feels good the ego is fulfilled why is everybody wrong because he sees everywhere the same thing he is suppressing his own mind will become more and more sexual and more and more he will be afraid this celibacy is perversion it is unnatural a different quality a different type of celibacy happens to the one who knows tantra but the very process is diametrically opposite tantra first teaches how to move in sex scientifically how to know it how to feel it how to come to the deepest possibility hidden in it how to explore the unexplored realms how to reach to the climax how to find the essential beauty the essential happiness and bliss that is hidden there once you know that secret you can transcend it because really in a deep sexual orgasm it is not sex which gives you the bliss the it is something else sex is just a situation something else is giving you the euphoria the ecstasy that something else can be divided into three elements but when i speak about these elements do not think that you can understand them just from my words if you do that that will be magical like you are using the words without knowing it tantra focuses on knowing the meaning the essence of the word they can become part of your experience as concept they are useless because of three basic elements in sex you come to a blissful moment those three elements are first timelessness you transcend time completely there is no time you forget time completely time ceases for you not that time ceases instead it ceases for you you are not in it there is no past no future only the moment is but at times during the act of love making you go into the past or in the future that is because of the egocentric identities in this very moment here and now when time has ceased only existence is concentrated this moment becomes the only real moment if you can make this moment the only real moment without sex then there is no need of sex through meditation one attains to this but first experience of euphoria of this timelessness comes through sex when you understand it and you are going into totally without any conditioning or egocentric identities secondly in sex for the first time your ego egocentric identities vanish and you become egoless so all those who are very much egoistic they are always against sex because in sex they have to lose their egos egocentric identities and conditionings you cannot continue conditionings and enter into sex to experience the euphoria 
you are not. Nor is there the other. You and the beloved are both lost into something else. A new reality evolves. A new unlit, no new unit comes into existence which in which the old is vanished. There are not two instead one, completely lost. Ego is afraid. You are no more there. If without sex you can come to a moment when you are not, then there will be no need for sex. But this happens only when you have completely overcome this and experienced this through sex because there is no other way to experience it first. And thirdly, in sex you are natural for the first time. The unreal is lost. The faces are lost. The society, the culture, the civilization, the egocentric identities, all are lost. You are a part of nature, as trees are, as animals are, as stars are. You are a part of nature. You are a greater something, the cosmos, the Tao, that which is. You are floating in it. You cannot even swim in it because you are not. You are just floating, being taken by the current. These three things give you ecstasy. Sex is just a situation in which it happens naturally. Once you know and once you can feel these three elements, you can create these in elements independently of sex as well and eventually it happens. The deeper you go into sex, one day you come out of it and you realize that you have transcended. All meditation is essentially the experience of sex but without sex. Without getting fulfilled in sex, you cannot attain to meditativeness. Once you have to, but you have to go through it. It must be part of your experience. Not just there is concept, ideas or thoughts. So Tantra says, those who are still uncivilized, uneducated, uncultured, they are more alive, they are more vital and that is the observation of the modern psychologist as well. A Negro is more vital than the American. That is the fear of the American. The American is very much afraid of the Negro. The fear is that American has become very much plastic and the Negro is still vital, is still down to earth. Tantra is the only world for those who are still primitive. There is a possibility of starting to grow. You have grown in a wrong direction. You have not grown yet. In that sense, they can still choose a right direction. They are more potential and they do not have anything to undo, they proceed directly. Enough for now.